Hey, welcome to Time Capsule here on the Games Done Quick Hot Fix, the show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and speed run our way through popular or influential games released in a particular year. I am your host, Smooth Operative. Thank you very much for joining us. Tonight, we take a look at speed games released in the year 1998, and we are kicking it off with Lara Croft and Tomb Raider 3. Uh, and later, Banjo-Kazooie. But for now, uh, I am joined by the Glitch Gamer and Celestial Bomber here for uh, some Tomb Raider 3. Howdy! Hello! My name is Glitch Gamer. I am a any percent speedrunner for... ...into my mic, but anyways... <laughs> um... My good friend, I've known him for years, so he'll be helping me explain the glitches a little bit and ask questions because he doesn't know the run as well as I do. So he'll be able to ask questions about things that I'm not like thinking about explaining because I've been playing this for a little while. So, yeah, that's me. I'm here to be the thorn in the side. <laughs> <laughs> Well, whenever, uh, yeah, whenever you are ready, we can uh, get this started. Okay, three, two, one, let's go. Good luck. So we're going to start off in India. Lara has gotten word of an artifact called the Infada Stone. And she's going to go down this large slope, I would call it. Um, in order to get to this river valley. Um, we won't see much of this level because I'm just going to skip right to the end with a couple glitches. Um, this is going to be a corner, or not corner, a curve jump up here. And then I'm going to do something called a flare cancel. So when Lara is canceling her stumble animation using the flare so it saves time. And then what I did there is that I dove underneath the door so I can get to the end level. So basically I'm just holding dive in action. She'll go underneath the door and it ends the level to the cutscene. Um, what you saw there was a corner glitch. You'll see a lot of those. Um, the game tries to correct if you get embedded into a wall or anything like that, the game will try to co like correct her by doing a vertical correction to where she will be lifted to the nearest platform. So it's really good to get a vertical advantage on things. And so now we're in Temple Ruins. And we're just going to navigate this Temple Ruins to find the artifact. Um, the cutscene that we skipped introduces a character named Tony. Um, he's also looking for the artifact. He's a little bit out of sorts mentally. Um, but we'll see him later. What are you talking about? Tony's a great guy. <laughs> Tony's wonderful. <laughs> we only see him briefly, but he's wonderful. Um, this is quicksand here, or mud, or whatever you want to call it. Um, we definitely use this later on in the run, because you can manipulate Lara's movement in the quicksand to get underneath objects. Um, but we won't do that right now. Um, we're just going to do a couple precise movements to get her where she needs to go. Kill a monkey. That's very important for a glitch coming up. I'm going to save it here because it's this game is full of traps. He also dislikes monkeys. I am terrified of monkeys. I find them to be very scary. What would you say is the most scary feature on a monkey? I don't know. I just don't like that they have thumbs. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> I don't know thumbs. why. Raccoons have thumbs? Yeah, but raccoons are cute, and they wash their food before they eat it. Um, This cotton glitch coming candy. up. Yeah, if you feed a raccoon cotton candy, they'll try to wash it, and it absorbs right into the water. It's kind of sad. 
So this is going to be an underwater glitch. I'm going to position Lara to go between this wall. And if I do it right, it skips having to pull levers. Yep, there we go. Um, she'll go right through the trap door. So there are two doors that we have to get keys for because there's no way to get through them with glitches for some reason. We haven't figured it out yet, so we have to get the keys. We have to get five keys in total. This is the first one. Whee. We jump on the fallen stuff because it brings us forward a little bit. For some reason, one of my buttons isn't working, so I'm just going to use the button on the keyboard if it wants to work. Which it doesn't want to work. That's okay. How important of a button is that button? <laughs> yeah, wasn't which it's, button are we talking the, about? It's the small health pack button. Oh, ah, okay. okay. Uh, It'll be okay. Uh, you could go in the menu and use them when needed, I suppose. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I see Laura's very good at Sometimes it fixes itself, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so the reason I'm killing these monkeys, there's five monkeys in total, is I'm going to light a flare and drop it here. And then I'm going to go out of bounds here in a second. So when I go out of bounds, the game gets confused of where Lara's location is because I'm not on the map anymore. So the game is going to think that the flare as an entity is Lara. So I'll be skipping a trigger that'll allow me to keep the water in the next room filled. So I don't have to do a whole bunch of other things in order to get the next key. So, once they go into this room over here, this pool of water coming up is going to be full of water. And if I didn't do the glitch, this would be empty. We need it to be full because we have to pull this lever. Because apparently, Lara can't pull this lever when there's water in here. It's fine. <laughs> Wait, when there's not water in there? Or, yeah, when there's not water in there, yeah, sorry. I'm like nervous. It's fine. Um, so water needs to be in this to pull that lever. For some reason, when she's dry, she can't get it done, which is fine. OK, that's pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> so by doing that skip as well, it glitches the room um, next coming up. This guy is nice. Actually, he was actually quite nice. What's his name? Glenn. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Glenn. Don't get crushed by the spikes. So the game is still confused. So the boulders are going to drop, but the door isn't open. So I don't have to worry about... Actually, I'm going to reposition her a little bit. I don't have to worry about the boulders chasing after me. But what that means is I have to do a specific order and open the door a specific way. And this is a pretty finicky glitch to get up here. It's another corner bug, but you have to like roll into it instead of crawling into it so that your back is turned so you can manipulate Lara to go backwards instead of forwards onto the platform instead of out into nowhere. So now that the levers are pulled, we pull this block, and the door will finally open. Just like that. This level is probably the most difficult level in the game, at least in my opinion, because there's so many traps. There's so many things that could just go weird. So we actually have to kill these Shiva statues because they have the scimitars that we need for the statue that's missing two of them. 
to open the door. So I guess there's three doors. So I try to get them to die on top of each other because if I'm lucky, if we get that beautiful luck, we did. We get both awesome. swords at the same time. That's a that pickup. usually never happens. Nice, nice. So that saves time instead of having to go to one statue and then go to the next statue. I can get both of them at the same time. And then we'll put this on. It'll open a door. Oop. That's a good example of the flare cancel. Doing the instead of like doing a stumble where she'll like take a knee. She'll just land like normal and you can just keep running as she throws the flare. Stumbling wastes about a second and a half. It's kind of annoying. It's, yeah, and we're going to be using flares a lot to make sure she doesn't do that. And the other one is called a perpetual flare cancel. Um, so I'm going to save it here. This is a risky place to save it, but I'm okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to load it. The levers are really hard to see in the dark. So sometimes this takes a second. To... Why is she not finding it? From before, I will say a perpetual flare cancel is where there we go oh, not perpetual flare cancel. Uh, yes perpetual flare cancel you end up holding a flare when you get up from crawling and yep. laura pulls out a fake flare she just the game thinks she has one but she doesn't and it allows you to do a normal flare cancel and some other stuff but it doesn't actually consume a flare which is nice in the early game because you don't really have that many flares though that'll change later on yeah in the start of the game you only get two flares i picked up a flare set And you said that that works when she's crouched, or? Uh, you have to hold the flare button when you get up from, from the crouched. Crouch. Oh, OK. Ooh. That's some red water. Yeah, she liked touching the spikes. She wanted to see if it was real. Um, the perpetual flare cancels are really nice. Especially when we have to do multiple drops or manipulating her to where she will take some sort of stumble. Because we can do multiple of them in a row. Okay. I'm going to grab this health crystal over here. Because sometimes this one is rude and likes to knock me over. It's Glenn's brother. Gary. His name's Gary. Gary's being ooh, ooh. Gary was very, okay. very Yeah, he didn't like that I um, was not so nice with his brother. So we're going to skip that cutscene. Basically, we encounter Tony again, and he's, like, angry. And he found the Infada Stone instead of us, and he impaled it into his heart. And now he has like magical telekinetic powers no big deal um this level you're supposed to use an atv four-wheeler um i don't like to use those because you know laura likes being eco-friendly and she doesn't want to use any vehicle at this time <laughs> so what she does is she's going to do this beautiful little wall glitch where she will pop up onto this platform and we'll use this platform later on as well for another glitch in London. And we'll do another corner bug there. So that one's a falling corner bug. Um, when she falls into water, she'll like pull herself forward as your position like that. She'll pull herself into the corner 
and we'll be able to pop up pretty far up into the sky. And then this is glitchless, but I don't think they use it in glitchless. It's a really fun banana jump. Nice. To where you don't have to use any vehicles because we're eco-friendly, like I said. So we're heading to the end of the level. Um, a little bit about this game. I've been playing this game since I was five years old when it came out in 1998. <laughs> um, I wasn't allowed to play this game as a kid. I used to sneak into the living room when my parents were sleeping, and I would play this game. Little to my parents' knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I did the same thing with Tomb Raider 4. Um, in that one, I did save over one of their save files, so they finally found out that I was playing games I was not allowed to play. So this is Caves of Kalia. This level is a maze. It's one of my favorite levels of the game because there's no glitches in it. You literally just ping-pong Lara around, sprinting around these corners. To get to Tony. Um, you could say this level is pretty amazing. Ah. <laughs> so. The nice thing with this level is it's pretty straightforward. Once you know how to do the level, it's the clear path. If you go the other ways, there's like a lot of hazards and whatnot that you run into. This is Tony. Everyone say hi to Tony. Hi, hi. Tony. <laughs> okay, I think we're about done with Tony. Bye, Tony. Bye, Good night. Tony. See you in the next run. Bye. See, he's not that bad of a guy. So we got the Infada artifact. At this point, the game, um, she encounters Willard, who tells her that there's three more artifacts to find, and he wants her to do the finding for him. So we're gonna go to Nevada now, because the next artifact is in Area 51. And we get to be greeted with these nice vultures. Yep, hi who like to ruin this corner bug for me, but we're not going to let them. Oh, nice. Yeah, if the vultures hit you enough, they'll push you out of the way. Um, essentially, that was really bad for the run. Sometimes you get lucky like that, and I don't have to worry about it. And they'll push me right into the corner where I need to go, which is really nice. <sighs> when there's that beautiful, like, assistance from angry enemies. So we're going to do another corner bug here to pop up here. And then the next glitch is one of my favorite glitches. It's called a Pauk, which if you've ever watched a Tomb Raider 1 or Tomb Raider 2 speedrun, um, there's the Quap. So a Quap you use to get underneath like doors or embed yourself. The reverse quap here is going to be used as a way to embed us into this wall. So what quap is, is based off of a game. I can't remember who made the game, but Laura will fun. assume. Oh, thank you. Same Laura party. will assume a position where she looks like the character from quap. Because when you hit a wall in a specific way, it cancels her, I think it's her fall animation or her jump animation. So then she's stuck in that position, which allows us to go underneath doors because she's jammed into the ground. I think I explained that right. But that one is called a pauk because it's a quap backwards. And we'll see another actual quap coming up. Headphone user's uh, Headphone warning. warning. 
<laughs> That's um, actually a really funny sound. We skipped using that ATV too by grabbing the barbed wire, which, funny enough, I did that as a kid <laughs> before I even knew speedruns were a thing because I did not like this level. So we magically summon a, <laughs> um, a four-wheeler to get across because, you know, Lara's a witch. It's fine. We knew this. She's a witch. She's a witch. But um, we failed. Um, didn't accelerate enough. This guy. Oh, he's nice. Oh, thank you. Um, as I say. So she crashes it. Because, you know, she tried being eco-friendly. And this is another reason. She's like, you know, I shouldn't have done that. So she gets caught. Now we're in prison. We're in a military base prison. So we have to get out of here because we're trying to get to Area 51 and hopefully we can figure out a way to get there from here. And luckily, through good story writing, we can. I'm not worried about taking damage here because I will be doing something called a zombie Lara, and I'll be explaining that now. I will be essentially killing Lara while healing Lara at the same time, so the game thinks she's dead, and Lara thinks she's alive. It's complicated, but it allows us to skip a, a lot. Oh, it's working again. That's good. This is a door glitch here. It's going to be a save load glitch. So when he's in the doorway, we're going to save it and load it twice. Every time we load it, the door resets and reopens. And when the door reopens for one frame, it hits our good friend here. And he takes damage when the door opens. <laughs> so essentially, we, we did not kill him. The door did. That's we were just the there. classic, like, you got Ooh. me, partner. Lays down on the ground. <laughs> I guess I'll I'll be down here now. <laughs> so thank you, Steve, for being so if Steve doesn't lay down there. He chases Laura in through the bathroom into the storage room, so I don't consider him a very nice guy. He's not nice. Okay, Nap time so, is important, you know? Yeah. Sleeping on the job? Get paid to do it? Best it's thing okay. ever. We'll be teaching nap time to a lot of the people in this place. <laughs> so for some reason, the storage room has a lever where you can just fill it with water. <sighs> It just works. And Laura won't catch on fire if you get out of that real quick. So this is the zombie Lara setup. Um, I'm a little worried that I'm going to crash it, but it should be fine. Um, so I'm going to run, jump through the fan. The game thinks I'm dead because if you hit the fan, it's an automatic death. Hold on, I have to count. Sorry. Anyways, it's an automatic death. And so the health crystal there is what saves you. Because if you're in midair and you die, you have until you fall on the ground to, like, get the menu. But since she gets the health at the same time... The game doesn't know what's going on. So in Zombie Lara, which I'm in right now, I can't access the menu anymore. I can still load and save. I just can't, you know. Or no, I can't load and save, excuse me. I can still heal. Yeah, I can still heal, but I can't save because the game thinks I'm dead. Sorry, that's phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really, actually really funny. And I can access the inventory, too, when I, like, do a key. So it's like, okay, that's cool, I guess. It's just I can't load. It's like, let's add an extra little spice to this run. Finish the rest of the level without loading or saving. Good luck. 
Laura's gonna recruit some friends to help with teaching nap time. Yeah, so this is aggressive nap time. <laughs> Maybe. There we go. Good night. Uh, where's the key? There it is. So I don't know why these people are here, but, you know, we love them. So we can access that menu, but we can't access any other menu. It's fine. Oop. So doing that crawl space glitch that I did after the zombie Lara, one allows me to skip doing a ladder, but also lets me skip loading current in the water coming up. Which is really nice because we don't have to drop a door, like a shutter door, because there's a fan that will suck Lara into it in the water. It's a lot of fun. But I then. To ask something. Yes. What killed that guard a moment ago when you pulled oh. that lever? <laughs> there's a secret laser. So, in the PC version of this game, you can't see the lasers very well, which is great. Um, so you'll see me be very cautious in certain parts to avoid certain lasers. Like, that one's an instant death laser. There's another one coming up that's an also an instant death laser. Um, but yeah, so doing that current thing, I can go into this tube without getting sucked back into the fan. And we're going to do the most difficult glitch. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I'm going to try... It's just this really difficult. All you have to do is swim into that corner and then it pops you in because that corner is not solid. If you ever want to do a fun little glitch, that's probably the easiest glitch you can do in this game. Skill. Is you just nice, hit nice. the top of that incline and she'll just pop right through. So next time you want to impress your friends, just be like, check this out. Hey, look, watch me phase through a wall. Okay, gonna grab a med pack. We don't need the pistols, but we do need a desert eagle. Most important thing in the game. It's it's a nice one. <laughs> I should mention. Oop. Yeah, yeah. The turrets don't like me either. I should mention that I am playing the Japanese version of this game. Um, which allows me to kill enemies faster. When they were making Tomb Raider 3, they had this thought process that when they were releasing it in Japan, that this game would be too hard for people in Japan because they're used to 2D side-scroller games and nothing really 3D at the time. So they decided to make all the enemies have half the health that it has in the US version, or any version, I should say. So it makes enemies dying really quick, which is going to be really nice when we have to do uh, the l last two boss fights. I think it's the same for the Japanese version of Tomb Raider 2 also. I'm not sure yeah, about I think the other so. games in the series. So... Very conveniently, there's a truck here that's going to be going to Area 51. Good story writing here. It, this is such a tall order, too. Willard's just like, okay, yeah, go to Area 51. Just break in there. That's fine. Domestic terrorism. <laughs> no big deal, girl. You got this. <laughs> uh, fearless, Laura. She's like, bet. It's like, it might be a little difficult for you. And she's like, I got this. Don't worry. I got this. I have so much money. Diplomatic immunity. Honestly, that's the best way to put it, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Area 51, we have to get the artifact. We skip one of my favorite scenes in the glitchless run, which is setting off a nuke. So there's a nuclear rocket that we launch in order to get somewhere in the game 
We'll see the nuclear missile, but we won't launch it. So I guess, you know, we don't actually commit domestic terrorism in this glitched run. So this is actually a good boy run. Tomb Raider 3 any percent has a very, well, a relatively peaceful aura in comparison. Yeah, I mean, thankfully, you know, in the first level, we skip all the tigers, so no endangered animals were harmed in the making of this game. We don't hurt any dogs, which is very important. Okay. You do get a couple of rats, though. Yeah, we do kill a couple of rats, but, you know. The classic. That's fine. She's done that several times before. I'm actually going to save it right here, just in case. Because this part can be very brutal. I'm going to load that. That was rough. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to go in here. Excuse me, boys. I'm sorry. I don't have time. I'm so busy. I have two more artifacts after this one. I gotta go. We're going. It's a good thing guards don't know how to crawl. Yes. <laughs> So some features that were added, I forgot to mention, from Tomb Raider 2 to Tomb Raider 3 is crawling and sprinting. Ooh, thank goodness for that. Um, so we can use sprinting to move Lara faster. It's a lot faster than doing running and jumping, which was the old fast strat. Um, sorry, I have to focus really quick. That's okay. So this is where I'm going to do a GG. It's called a glitchless glitch. It's not glitchless at all. So this is the GG where I go into the seam here. And then it goes into a flicker. For some reason, when you flicker in that wall, this door opens. No idea why it opens, but it saves us going out of our way. Oop, that's not good. Must just have a really wide like trigger point. Yeah, because usually we need a key in order to open that. So for some reason, I think it's like if you're behind in the wall, it's like, oh, I guess I should be open now. You should be already inside. But it opens for us and then shuts immediately after. So if you also agree that glitchless glitch is a stupid name for a glitch, say GG in chat. GG. Also, anything that goes wrong in this run, which we're pretty smooth sailing right now, um, blame cell. Hashtag blame cell. No, no, do not do this. <laughs> I'm going to save it here, just in case. Because this thing likes to get me. So now we're doing the setup for the regular co-op, which starts here. So I'll be doing inputs. I guess I don't need that anymore. In order to set myself up to do the quap. Riley, how could you do this to me? I see the blame cells in chat. That makes me so happy. No! <laughs> Why did this have to go on the GDQ? <laughs> so when anything goes wrong, we're in a Minecraft server together. That's how we met. Oh no. Aww, <laughs> story time. Oh boy. Oh, in the chat. Ooh. I might be responsible for a large quantity of server crashes, but it's fine. Everything is okay. So we just quaffed under that door. So we skip a whole bunch of like key cards and, you know, harming other innocent lives so that we can do that. 
And now we're going to go on this very squishy UFO. And hopefully... There you go. Oh, she doesn't like me today. Flame cell. No. Enjoy these <laughs> wonderful squishy noises. There we go. Excuse me. And the artifact is right here. Very nice. Let's take a little breather. Okay. So now we're going to go to London, which is Lara's home country. And we're going to skip this whole level. This whole level, you have to do rooftop stuff. And then there's like this whole weird sewer system thing that you have to do. But I don't think the devs intended us to be able to skip this by just jumping and turning while we're jumping to get on this platform and be done with the level. It's like fastest level. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I never knew that. without saving, it would have been 29 seconds. And that's like, boom. <laughs> um, I, I also did that. that glitch when I was a kid. <laughs> Because I remember this level being confusing and saw that. I was like, why is this here? I don't yeah, know. I want to know actually what your parents said when they found out you were sneaking uh, the gameplay in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I'd like to point something out that Riley didn't hit, just overwrite their save data once. It happened multiple it's times. It's happened multiple <laughs> times. Like, I got caught multiple times doing the playing Tomb Raider. Because Tomb Raider, like, the other, so my parents weren't mad. They were like, you know, they're like, you can't play this game. You're grounded from the PlayStation. I'm like, you know, totally get it. Fair. Understand. Um, and then I started in the backyard. I used to reenact Tomb Raider. Like, I would put, like, random, like, things in the yard and, like, walk to the edge, back up, Aww. run forward. Grab onto nothing. Oh my god, that is so <laughs> in the adorable. Backyard, and I like be. I was obsessed with Tomb Raider as a kid. Um, so cute. And then my parents, you know, were like, "Fine, you can play Tomb Raider. We get it." Oh, wrong button. So now what we're gonna do is a save load glitch. So that load that we have here in River Ganges is gonna help us because when we load back while we're in this sliding, she's gonna keep that sliding momentum and get like stuck. So we're gonna just move her a little bit at a time and she'll just sneak right past this thing. We don't need a ticket. That was a quick one. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Um, by the way, we're in a subway. I forgot, you know. Um, so when I was a kid, I reenacted Tomb Raider and all that fun stuff. My mom used to play this game all the time, and I used to watch her play it all the time. This is her favorite one, so that's another reason why I chose Tomb Raider 3, was because it was my mom's favorite one, Aww. as the one I wanted to speedrun. And when I told my mom I was doing this on GDQ, she bought me a new gaming chair. Aww. Well, oh, that's <laughs> weird. Okay. Shout I did out not to know that. mom. Shout out to mom. Love you, mom. Um, I'm not using the gaming chair right now. <laughs> I have to break it in later. I tried using it while practicing, and I have my like normal chair. Like you know, the elbow spots are perfectly like settled in, and it works perfectly. I'm comfortable. We fall down the pit. Those people that were angry at us are no longer angry at us because we fall and whoever their leader is, is like, hey, I need you to get this embalming fluid because the person you're after uh, does medical experiments on us for cosmetics and she's not nice and she just throws us down here. So we're just rotting, but we're, you know, immortal. It's cool. So... Laura's like, you know, I could get the embalming fluid, but I'm just gonna 
Oop. I'm just gonna die instead. It's okay, the other barbed wire is safe. The other barbed wire is safe. Um, so you could get the embalming fluid and, you know, help the... But we're not gonna do that. We're like, we're really busy. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm gonna save it here just in case. This never happens. That's Always gotta happens be a before. moment like that. And we're just gonna dive over the barbed wire and just, we're not getting that barb or the embalming fluid, sorry. <sighs> That's nope. an elegant so, recovery. We're going to go under here and we're going to get something called a UPV. The UPV is a underwater propulsion vehicle. Um, it allows us to go a little bit faster in the water and a nice little surprise later on of the UPV. Um, nice thing with the UPV is that it will glitch us just above the water to get air on angled surfaces. So you'll see me put Laura's head and just force her head up through the wall. She's taking air, so. Oh, that's awesome. You can do that. I'm going to get this lever. Hope he doesn't hurt us too bad. This crocodile is either really nice or really relentless. He's looking like he's going to be really nice to us today. We got a scuba Steve here. And then go down here. I will say that the UPV is the second hardest thing to drive in this game. The first vehicle that's the hardest to drive will be the kayak, which we'll see coming up soon. The infamous kayak. <laughs> the infamous kayak. Um, but the UPV, it does forward momentum even when you're going straight up it'll still like slightly move forward for no reason i mean you probably have to be angled a little bit to drive it who knows we're just gonna get some air this nice little health crystal here parker upv and then this is where the fun begins if when you're on the upv and you're against a wall here like this and you hit the go button and the get off button and then hit the go button directly afterwards, the game thinks that Lara is off of the UPV. You can no longer hear the UPV like fan whirl, so like the sound. So we're just gonna do this. Also, the nice thing with the glitched UPV is that I no longer have to worry about air. My air container is no longer going down. The game doesn't know what Lara's doing, but it's just going to keep it at the same air. So the nice thing with Lara being a witch is that she can turn a water vehicle into an air vehicle. And we're just going to take this all the way to the end <laughs> of the level. Such magic. Wowie wowie. And then turn around, go through here. And that's that. So we encounter Sophia here, and she doesn't want to give up her artifact. So now we have to forcibly take it back from her. She could be either really nice, like she's doing right now, in charge, which gives us a little bit of time to catch up to her because we want to jump into our force field. And thank you, Sophia, for that. So what she does is if you get over here on her side of the building, she has a force field to knock Laura back to the other side. So you're While he's having mic issues briefly. Yeah, I'm sorry. It keeps disconnecting and reconnecting. I don't know why. Anyways, let's try that again. 
So. Oh, thank you, Sophia. You're being so nice. You weren't nice earlier today. Oh. She's not going to be nice. Anyways. This is usually a run killer section because if you miss it. By a little bit, you won't be able to get up where you need to go. But she's being nice today. Thank you so much. And we're just gonna beat her to the top. Again, we're not killing her. We didn't kill her at all. We just shoot an electrical thing that we were shocks doing electrical her. Electrical maintenance. We weren't shocking her. We were doing electrical maintenance. It's it's a shocking end for her. <laughs> and now we're on to the final artifact in the South Pacific Islands. So the UPV glitch that we did in the underwater section kind of sets the current values a certain way for Madubu Gorge. So when we're in the kayak, we can do a specific input in order to get the kayak to where we need it to go. So I have to set up Lara in that first swimming sequence to just swim straight forward to not hit any current and just round that corner just a little bit so that she doesn't go into current and change the current values again. For some reason, the current values stay the same throughout levels. Like you can just alter levels. Um, anyways, I just did the quicksand skip here. Ooh. This is where the quick part of quicksand comes in. Riley, watch so out, there's I do spikes. This... Ooh. Okay. So, fun fact. The game doesn't keep spike values in this trap stuff, so you can save it and load it, and these spikes will go away. I was going to be dramatic and be like, oh no, I didn't mean to save it. <laughs> but I definitely almost forgot to save it in general, so that would have been a no-no situation. <laughs> Fair. So now we're going to do another corner bug here. Lara, you got this, girl. Lara, you got this, girl. And then we'll turn around and then she'll do a nice little flicker. And then slowly make her way up to the top. Just gotta say, Lara's be better at dancing than I am. Yeah, I have no rhythm. <laughs> I'm beat deaf. And the fact that I made it through... The uh, some of the traps that require like beat listening already. I'm doing great. That was a very long screen. Yeah, when Lara <laughs> falls into quicksand, she doesn't take damage for whatever reason. But she still screams because it's, you know, quicksand and scary. It's funny because, you know, as fearless as she is, like a little bit of quicksand's gonna make her scream that loud. <laughs> She's like, ew, bacteria. No, gross. Whoa, dinosaur. So, surprise, there's a dinosaur. The artifact's power in this area is, I think it's supposed to be time standing still. So there's still dinosaurs here. And the village leader is the guy who has this the artifact. And he's able to summon things as well. So he can summon creatures whatever he wants. So I'm going to set up for this really specific corner bug that'll help us skip. This will help us skip the entire level. Here. Okay. Please don't try to run into me. I would really not like that. 
And if I did my setup correctly, we'll do a corner bug and skip having to blow the barrier down. Like so, like that. So this is Madubu Gorge. And that's why I save it. If you get in the rapids at all, you will die. So what we need to do is unlock the kayak so we can take the kayak out for a little downriver jaunt. Nice relaxing downriver jaunt. It's so relaxing. It's <laughs> so relaxing. It's so relaxing that we're all going to be quiet and... That, yeah, enjoy. so relaxing that we're going to be... ...having issues. This is... It's never happened before. Oh. But yeah, so this kayak part, I have to do a set of specific inputs. <laughs> which i thankful that I have a label maker, so I wrote them down. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. One, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, one. Oh. Laura will, for some reason, not want to do it. Just like that. All right, that went smooth. Beautifully embedded into this where we will get out where we're not supposed to. This allows us skipping going all the way down river and having to climb all the way back up river to get to this section. So we'll embed into that rock, jump out, and we can swim back because the current isn't super strong in this area. I'm gonna do a safety save here because the anxiety is real. Not my anxiety, Lara's anxiety. She doesn't like water. For such a, you know, relaxing level, this is, I think, one of the more stressful ones. To yeah. Be it's such a beautiful level, like, casually. Like, you're going into these beautiful caves and all this water features and waterfalls. But during a run, you're just like, I can't see anything but those paddles. <laughs> Headphone user's slight warning. This is a wonderful sound. Yes, it normally sounds like yeah, it sounds like it's a car engine. I don't know what a car engine sounds like. <laughs> so what I did there is I did a specific set of inputs to get her in a position that I can go back upriver without having any issues with drowning. You're not supposed to go back that way. You're supposed to go, there's a, a route that opens up that takes you back to where the kayak is down at the bottom of the river. But we didn't park our kayak there, so we're not gonna go that way. Ooh. Sometimes she likes to 
play in the water a little bit. It's relaxing for her. On this relaxing down river job. Oh. Oh, beautiful corner. Thank you so much for that help. Save it again. It's better to be I, safe than sorry. I was a little um, worried that you might have gotten stuck there. A little bit, tiny bit. Everything's okay. Wee. Gonna do our little bit of a jaunt downriver again. I didn't see what my health was. Ooh. Getting some nice acupuncture spikes along the way. Yeah, seriously though. I'm just going to wait it out, because I'm pretty good alignment here. This fall takes a lot of hell. If you don't do it right, like that. So we want to fall slow enough that she's not, you know, full bore going to this hole. It's also nice and, to hit piranhas, because piranhas are bad. Yeah, so when you glitch through this area, the piranhas are still here. Because those load in afterwards. There we go. Ooh. So that's the dreadful kayak. That went smoother than I was expecting, and that makes me super happy. <laughs> now for the dreadful crocs. <laughs> and now the dreadful crocs. Yeah, GG on that kayak it is a lot harder than it looks, I'm sure, to all of you. <laughs> so the crocs can grab Lara. Oh! I don't know what just happened. That never okay. happens before. Okay. <laughs> I'm... We're working with it. We're good. With it. Praise be. <laughs> So this is Temple of Puna. So Puna is the village leader. Um, so all the blow dart guys are really warm, welcoming people. This one's actually going to be another glitchless situation. There's just a lot of trap rooms. I'm going to be taking my time. Because I don't want to get hit by that thing. I have to hit four switches and avoid the blades at the same time. And heal myself from poison at the same time. <sighs> this part as a kid is probably why I have so much anxiety as an adult. Ooh. Okay. All right. So there's a block you can pull out, which will stop the ceiling spikes from falling onto you and killing you. I've never known about this block until recently, so we're not doing it. Also, it. Let you see the big boulder. There she is. Indiana Jones. Here we go. I won't let you see that one though, because it's scary. Okay. So here's Puna. We're like, oh, there's an artifact. Yay, we can go grab it really easy. He's like, surprise. The dramatic chair turn. <laughs> Every villain needs a dramatic chair turn. <laughs> um, since we are in the Japanese version, he dies real quick. He's gone. Um, I'm going to grab this backup med. We usually don't take this med unless we absolutely have to, but we're doing it. So now we're done getting all the artifacts. So now we're meeting Willard in Antarctica. 
where Lara's going to survive a helicopter crash. And we're here. I'm going to make a save here and here. We'll use that save kind of like how we use the River Ganges save for the end of the game. And then let's just boop into this water. So the nice thing with Tomb Raider 3 is that the save load is so broken in this game that we have an exposure meter, which you can see in the top left or yeah, top left corner. What's my lefts and rights these days? Um, when you save it and load it, it resets the exposure meter, because if that runs out, your health is going to go. So we try to not save too many times, but also resetting the exposure meter means we can swim in cold water for longer. It's a great thing this isn't the PS1 version. I think it works in the PS1 version as well. Do you, do you have enough save crystals? Oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah. The other thing is that the PC version, those green crystals, in the PC version, they just fully restore your health. But in the PS1 version, for some reason, they have the save crystal mechanic where you pick it up and you set a save point and you have a limited amount. And clearly that's a fun game mechanic, right? Yeah. So yeah, in the PS1 version, the crystals are blue. Please be nice to me, corner. The save crystals are blue. Oh. Oh, dang it. That's okay. <sighs> She'll do it again. But yeah, the save crystals are blue. I'm pretty sure the reason why they don't have a limited saves on the PlayStation version is that, like, with a memory card, like, even with the Tomb Raider 2, um... PlayStation version, you could save it and create a save point anywhere you'd like, but you can only do it within a level. And like you can start the next level and you have either you load a level or you load a current position, whereas like the PC versions, we're just going to save anywhere, anytime, any wherever. So now we meet Willard. Everyone say hi. Hi, Willard. So, hi there. Um, he Robbie's is like, I'm going to take your artifacts you did, and I'm going to, you know, get this meteorite with this extreme radiation. And, you know, we're going to change some things in the world. And she's like, no, that doesn't sound great. So I intentionally put that flare there because we're going to do a another one of those out of bounds flare things to skip having to run around in circles to close this door so we can get back in here. But yeah, so then he steals her artifacts and went down in the mines. So now we're chasing him in the mines where we will find out that people are already affected by the radiation and they've already become mutants. Um, there's two types of mutants in this level. There's the mutants that have really bad heartburn, so they like to burp a lot. <laughs> um, and they're poison, I should say. Yeah, that's true. And we're just going to avoid the. Keep going. That part is not fun because that flamethrower guy can definitely be like, um, no, we're actually gonna catch you on fire instead. <laughs> but now we can relax a little bit. So we only have to take two out of the three mine carts in this level. We take this one, we'll glitch over to the other area that we avoid doing the other mine cart, and then we'll take the last mine cart to the very fun underwater swim. And whoop. 
Somehow I managed to mess this this up so badly in my casual playthrough. Oh. <laughs> could not get over some of these gaps. Some of them are like, especially like that one is like really annoying. <laughs> or like having to press the levers while running. I missed that one a couple times during my practices. I'm like, this never happens. So we're going to do this beautiful setup here. Hopefully it works. I did my left and rights wrong. So what's the setup for? So what I'm going to do is glitch. It's not a glitch, sorry. I'm going to avoid having to side scroll all the way over and all the way back. So I can just fall down to this platform so I don't have to do... What you have to do is you shimmy back and forth, dropping back and forth to get to this point. But with that thing, I can just set it up where Laura will do this precise turn to where she'll turn against the wall and you're able to grab the next area. Are you going to be nice to me? Two whole shimmies. Two whole shimmies. Okay, so I'm going to grab this crowbar here. I see he was not nice to you this time. No, you can usually avoid getting poisoned. Um, I've been practicing this a lot, and I've avoided poison three times. And every time I giggled like a little girl, it made me so happy. Okay, I so... I on GDQ if it happened, but it didn't happen, so too bad. But it didn't happen. So what I did there is I did a precise side jump because the drills have a little bit of gap where Lara can just kind of, you know, squeeze in there and get through. Just get right past. She 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 sneaks right past you. I'm gonna wait for a cycle. Wait for the cycle. Headbutt it a little bit, it's fine. So now we need to get back to the minecart track, which is going to be up here. And instead of taking the minecart back like we're supposed to do, we're just going to, you know, manipulate a wall. Excuse me, sir. I'm busy. And we're just going to skip having to go back and just make our way to the other area. You know, no big deal. This is another glitchless glitch. This glitchless glitch turns into a flicker glitch, which is when you're in the wall, you'll start seeing her. While his mic is recovering, uh, he, glitches, he does a glitchless glitch to get up to the top and does a flicker to get across where water just kind of starts spazzing out and moving across and kind of floating over and looking like she's really good at dancing. <laughs> this is a pretty long one, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it is pretty long. One of the longer flickers in the game. And she's oh. being a little finicky, though. You can also kind of flicker with different velocities, so like, depending on how good you get it, it can either be really slow or pretty reasonable. She's struggle bussing right now. We're gonna run and jump. There we go. Just in case. I'm drawing my weapons out because if I don't, it's really, really bad on the eyes when I do this. Like the whole camera will shake, so this keeps it a little bit more stable. So now oh, she's good to know. flickering through here and we're gonna get on to this eventually
Beautiful. Very nice. Perfect. Okay, so this is going to be another one of those headphone warnings. It's not super bad, but it's kind of fun. I heard the heat Let's... vent symphony. Ooh, and then there's that guy. <laughs> another mutant. These ones are the bigger, angrier ones. They're fast, and they hit really hard. So we're just going to avoid him and go up this ladder. this kind of long ladder. One thing that they did fix, I'm pretty sure, between Tomb Raider 2 and Tomb Raider 3, is that in Tomb Raider 2 you can do this really fun ladder glitch where you can jump on the ladder and then drop down in a precise way and then phase into the wall and like make your way up. It looks really cool. But yeah, that, there is a ladder in Tomb Raider 2, and I think casually, if you climb it, it's a full minute. <laughs> it's like, yeah. A full minute? It is so long. <laughs> oh, you're kidding me. In diving area. Ugh. <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess probably those glitches don't work for this ladder. Maybe the walls are a bit different. Yeah, and you also can't do the um, where you can jump through blocks in the corners. Oh, so I guess they fixed they fixed the uh, fullness of blocks. I would say it's funny they you know they fixed some of the seams, but um, despite that, she can still go through quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, she can still break everything, and then adding the crawling, it makes the corner bugs really easy to get into instead of having to do a jump setup. One thing I think is kind of cool looking is when you know you're running and you do like the. I guess it's like a roll or something. It's like pretty cool. Oh, the sprint roll? Yeah, just like elegant gaming things. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> That's one. The theory that I appreciate is that they definitely made her a lot more smooth with her movements. And I think that was probably a challenge for a lot of gamers coming from like Tomb Raider 2 to 3 is that since she sprints now, you know, mm -hmm. you might find it a bit fast. Like, so when I watch this speedrun, I'm like, oh, she's going so fast. I don't know how <laughs> you do it, but I guess it's partly mechanics and, and the rest is style. So you're doing really well. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, especially with the sprinting. The one thing with the sprinting mechanic is that she takes really wide turns really quickly so it's really hard to manipulate her in certain ways so like in caves of kalia you can ping pong yourself or not is it ping pong or pinball yourself you know on the walls so that you're just hitting the walls and altering her trajectory and making her turns a little bit better of an angle so we're gonna do another flicker glitch here both pinball and ping pong do involve bouncing, so. <laughs> I guess that's true. Maybe less of her uh, stopping at the wall and like p pushing up with her hands. Let's see here. There you go. So this flicker will get us up above again, back to where we were, because this will take us right back into the main area. And I'm going to draw a flare, so without the gun, you can see it's a little bit more shaky. And then we're just going to open this door. If you're playing this game casually in the previous level, you get a crowbar as well. And the fact that she doesn't keep the crowbar in the levels, it just sets her back so much. She, I think after this game, she learns 
that she should keep them with her at all times. <laughs> Here's her one time use crowbar. Yeah, because in the last level, if you use the crowbar, it'll drop on the ground and you have to pick it up again and use it again. And this level just disappears completely. Maybe that was just a dev uh, overlooking it. <laughs> like, oh, I guess we should have her use it twice. So the sequence of minecart that we skipped is the really difficult one. So I'm glad we have the two easiest minecarts to navigate. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the crane. And we can use that to warm up Lara for the exposure meter. But we don't need the little bubble of whatever you want to call that thing. <laughs> so I am a little low on health packs. So I'm going to save load probably twice. So we just do the swim. I have a bunch of friends who play this game um, in a challenge run called No Loads, No Meds. So they will complete the whole game without taking any health packs, no dying, no saving, no health at all. And this is the hardest part of the Tomb Raider 3, is doing this swim without losing too much health. A little fun fact. Yeah, shout out to everybody who does the no loads, uh, no meds, because th that is daunting. <laughs> I, yeah. Not only is it glitchless, so it takes several hours to do. Oh, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Just oh. <laughs> Okay, so this is the penultimate level. This is the hardest level glitchless because there's a bunch of little challenges that you have to do. Um, once you're in the main temple that we thankfully get to skip. So what I'm doing is I'm opening the door Here we go. And I'm drawing Lara's guns at this point because if you don't draw her guns, she will like, it'll, the camera will pan to what's being changed. So we can't see how we're moving. So if you draw the guns, it'll stay on Lara, which is really nice. So we're gonna come up here. Push these buttons. As a kid, I never knew what these buttons meant. I just kept doing the combos until something worked. It's actually um, food chains. Found this out recently. Oh, it's food flower. chains. Uh, I guess animal eat animal. So maybe you start at the biggest or you start at the smallest. Yeah, you go from the apex predator and going your way down. There you go. So what I did there is a specific inputs to do a trigger skip, which will let me skip the rest of this level. I'm going to save it here, too, because this jump is a little. It's a little um, difficult. That's a tough one. Takes me a second here. Why is it going from that angle? I don't know. That's like, there we go. Nice. It was really messing me up there. I was like, I never practiced it this way. <laughs> so the mutants in here, so like the bugs and these alien versus predator looking things, <laughs> um, are actually a result of the meteor's radiation. So all of the people who lived in this um place that worshiped the meteor slowly but surely you know became mutated 
Um, that's a skip. So typically you're supposed to grab four masks and do these really challenging um, rooms. But thankfully we can skip that. And this is Willern as his Hi, final Will form. <laughs> He's changed a bit since we last saw him. Um, he turned into this beautiful arachnid he got a new haircut. thing. <laughs> Among other things. My yeah, favorite part of this little thing. Willard. He's not little. I don't know why I said little. My favorite thing about Willard is that if you look at him closely, we're not going to. <laughs> but if you look at him closely, he has this little hand that sticks out of his side, and it's just a cute little hand. You kind of can see it from here, but to get the full effect, you really got to approach him. But if you do that, he can one shot kill you, and we don't want that. He's just waiting to... for that high five. <laughs> but he's actually in a pretty interesting spot. I'm going to save it down here just in case this doesn't want to work. So we have to reclaim the artifacts. Oh, thank goodness. And there's Willard gone. So one of the new additions to this game is the snowflake glitch. And I'm going to do it. So what you got to do is you got to get Lara out of bounds. And we're getting close to time. I'm going to save it here just in case. This jump is a little finicky. Now, and it's technically out of bounds. So we're going to load our previous save here. And we're going to go to a particular spot where there's this beautiful particular snowflake. This glitch is not at all um, consistent. We don't know how to make it more consistent. I'm going to save it here and load it. Once the screen goes black, if I did it right, is time. And time. GG. Oh, all righty. Wow, that was beautiful. That's a nice uh, new way to do the ending. How, when when was the that ending uh, glitch discovered? I didn't see mm -hmm. it until June of last year, but I don't June know if it was. Year. That's when I started learning this, and I know it was relatively new then. Nice. You avoid having to get out of the hole, waiting for the helicopter. But oh, well, you, you've done a really wonderful job here uh, tonight. So thank you very much, thank you glitch, for, so much for, for running having this. <laughs> It was a blast. Do you have any uh, final words or shout outs or anything? Yeah, if you guys are ever interested in learning Tomb Raider 3 speedrunners, there is a Discord on the speedrunner.com. Um, on the Tomb Raider pages, there's the Tomb Runner Discord. So if you're ever curious on how to learn how to do the speedruns, we're more than happy to help. There's a lot of tutorial videos there, and it's a lot of fun. Um, thank you guys for having me. I'm so thankful. I want to thank James Hobbs, who couldn't be with us tonight. Um, he's the one who introduced me to GDQ, and I've always wanted to be on GDQ with this game, so it's really Aww. fun to be in a GDQ event with this game. But yeah, that's that's about it. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you again, Glitch, for being on. Um, if you uh, all of you watching enjoyed the run, please make sure you follow a runner that is at twitch.tv slash the glitched gamer um and i would recommend celestial bomber as well uh on twitch but i've been told that celestial does not stream <laughs> uh yeah I'm pretty so uh yeah. thank you very much celestial for being here and uh, of course glitch you did a great job um but don't go away everyone we are going to set up for the next game which is banjo kazooie so we'll be right back All right, everybody, welcome back to Time Capsule here on the Games Done Quick Hotfix. We are all set up for the next speed run of Banjo-Kazooie, and I am joined here by Azmi and Ring Rush, 
welcome to the show. How, how are you? Uh, feel free to introduce yourselves, Asmi. You can start first. Hello, I'm Asmi. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen me on webcam before, yes, I did make my bed just for this event. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, that's it for me, Ringrush. <laughs> well, it, that's <laughs> one that's hard to follow. Um, I'm Ringrush. I play this game a lot. I TAS it mostly, but I'm here to be a assist trophy for when Asmi needs to concentrate on some harder core glitches. All right, well, it's going to be a good time, I think. So, uh, Asmi, whenever you're ready, you can give us the countdown. All right. You can start in five, four, three, two, one, go. Best of luck. All right, let's go. So this is going to be Banjo-Kazooie Any% Percent for the Nintendo 64. To obviously beat the game as quick as possible. Uh, starting off, we're just going to skip learning all these moves. Uh, our fastest movement right now is just going to be roll fluttering. Just want to roll as fast as you can, or as much as you can, then flutter to get out of it. If you time your flutter perfectly, you can cancel it early. But yeah, we're just going to head to uh, up Spiral Mountain and into Mumbo's. Before this run started, I set up a glitch called uh, Furnace Fun Moves. You want to explain that, Ring Rush? Yeah, I, I knew you would make me explain this. Um, so, so Furnace funny. Fun Moves is a glitch where prior to the run starting, you go to Furnace Fun, which is a quiz show at the end of the game. You game over in a certain mini game, like there are these time challenges that you, Gruntilda sometimes makes you do. And because of that, you will be able to transfer moves over to the next game you start. I don't think we need to go into any further the technical details, but what essentially is going to happen is, as soon as he goes into Mumbo's Mountain, he'll have a wide variety of moves, such as Talon Trot. Um, I believe you get Flight for this route. Yep. Eggs and other things that otherwise you would have to talk to Bottles to learn these moves. Yeah, you get all the moves. So that right there, we got our first Jiggy. Your jiggies are used to open the world in this game. We're putting the Jiggy into this portrait to just to just open Mumbo's Mountain and say goodbye to the Jiggies because uh, we're not getting any more in this entire run. This is a one Jiggy run. We're skipping all other level openings in this entire run. That'll be neat. Which means no Jinjos. These guys are staying trapped forever by Grunty's spell. And yeah, Mumbo's Mountain full of quick notes. Any percent in this category, uh, basically you just need to get 810 notes. Once you do that, then you can open the final note door, and then that's what leads you to Grunty. We currently have no RTA way uh, to skip that note door. So we need to get 810 notes, which means that we go uh, through every single level because there are nine levels and 100 notes in each level. So we need to go through every level at least once. Mumbo's Mountain has a lot of really fast, easy notes. So we're getting all 100 here. Now we're entering tickers. Normally you need the termite in here, but if you can get your shadow off and on really quickly, you can basically just manipulate it so that you don't have to slide down. You can climb the rest of the tower, but I don't need to go up since I don't need the jiggy. So I'm just going to jump back down and head out. But as me, if we need to enter every single level and we're not collecting any more jiggies, how is this run even possible? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I don't know what you're supposed to be refer referencing. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> setting up suspense. Um, I do question the Jiggy you just grabbed, though. Mm-hmm. That single Jiggy. Oh, God. All right, right here, uh, since we don't need any Jiggies, we're not going to have to go to Konga at all. Uh, there's no notes there, and there is a move there, Eggs, but we already have that move learned because of FFM. So right about now, we're getting our last few notes, and then we'll be heading out of Mumba's Mountain. Right here is the only Jinjo we'll be collecting in this entire run. And it's only because there's no way to avoid him there. Well, there probably is, but it's probably not worth to try and go around him. And that's Mumbo's Mountain. Done in like four minutes in this run. So 
So, for those of you familiar with the game, you'll realize, of course, you can't open a Treasure Trove Cove. So, what you'll have to do is one of many level entry glitches you'll see in this run. This one's kind of unique. Um, there's no other level entry quite like it. But I will, I guess it makes sense to let it play out first. Just know that it is difficult. There, it is very easy to mess up. And so if he gets his first try, that's going to be pretty impressive. No, there's too much suspense. <laughs> ah. So here he's trying to clip the, the uh, cannon, turning the camera to try to get a bit more lag, because that just helps in this game. The more lag you have, the faster you go, at least if you have lag at all. He lands in out-of-bounds water, which allows him to swim. And right when the water ends, he flutters, beak busts, and ends into the loading zone to Treasure Trove Cove. Easy. Take note of that uh, swimming under the ground glitch, because that will be used one more time this run, later on. So right here, TTC, there's a lot of swimming, uh, a bit of flying, uh, and... There's just like a lot of movement in TDC. It's I find it to be one of the like hardest levels in general, the biggest skill check of a level, because there's so many different types of movement. There's quick dives, which we haven't even explained yet, but we'll get to it in a bit. Uh, flying, swimming, as I mentioned, and there's a few tricks. Very precise beak bombs in flight as well, which are all hard to do altogether. That was a clean tree. That tree sucks. I got lucky. <laughs> and this is one of the many benefits of Furnace Fun moves, is you get to see Beak Bomb, a move not normally learned until much later in the game, to very quickly travel around in flight. And so mm -hmm. for those of you who play the game casually, you may be envious of some of these upcoming sections. There's Blubber sobbing. We're not going to help him today. Sorry, bud. There's a quick dive. So what's happening there is we're basically leaving Talon Trot as we're entering the water. Uh, and essentially, uh, the animation is just continuing as we're falling through the water. And it just lets us sink all the way to the bottom until the animation is finished. There's the first beak bomb. And that's really hard to do. I'm so glad I got that. I was practicing that for like... 15 minutes before this run. Nice. There's a big jump all the way down. Hopefully we land right on top of these notes. Intentional fall damage. Clean. There's another Jinjo we're going to skip. Right here. We want to go down, but we don't want to take fall damage. Oh, no. <laughs> I fell. <laughs> That's actually fine, because... uh. I'm kind of scared of my feather count, so I'm going to get extras. <laughs> oh yeah, you were very low on feathers. Yeah. Uh, we want to go down, but we don't, don't want to take any hits. If we do the same quick dive trick, we can get all the way down without taking any hits and land perfectly on that token, which is nice. Unfortunate chest cycle. All right. Tokens matter a lot for this route, because he's going to end up needing 45 of them in yeah. kind of short succession, like without a lot of room to collect them. So any token you can get matters here. Alright. There's the last note for TTC. I'm going to quick dive down here. I want that feather. I want it. Alright. Get that token. I'm just gonna die on this shrapnel right here. These guys take two hits, so nice and easy death warp. The normal any percent route actually goes to Nipper. I, I just went to split even though I don't have life split open. <laughs> normal any percent route doesn't have uh doesn't death warp there. It actually goes to Nipper and it gets it gets the nose from inside of him. But I actually crafted a somewhat unique any percent route in order for optimal entertainment purposes, which makes it kind of hard, but it's actually about the same speed as the typical 90% that you would see in the current record. 
And I think I'm going to do get... this a lot harder just because of this trick right here, which I'll be yeah, starting I... up. This is a very hard trick is going to be coming up, so I think I need to get started with this explanation. What you're about to see is a new trick that's come out in about the last year or so. So if you ha haven't seen Banjo runs in a while, or even if you have and you haven't seen the Any% percent category, you may not have seen this. This is called a, a bit clip. And these have been popularly featured as one of the hardest tricks in all of speedrunning. Now, that's an exaggeration. They're not one of the hardest tricks in all of speedrunning. However, they are certainly one of the most precise tricks in all of speedrunning. Right now, you see a bunch of maneuvers, punches, beat barges, etc. And all of this is trying to get Banjo to land on a specific floating point coordinate. For reference of how difficult this is, in a single frame of walking, Banjo moves over a million times the width of this region. So we need to be absolutely perfect. And all of this movement right here is computed using a computer program in order to make sure he lands on this exact spot right there. And as you can see, he falls through the floor. But wow. the trick isn't over here because now we actually have to fight against the swamp. The swamp is slowly draining our health, but we need to get over to the loading zone. This part right here is really tricky, but he manages to hit the out of bounds water, stays in it, and just like Treasure Trove Cove, you can swim over, flutter when the water disappears, and beat bust back in bounds. And oh, with one health remaining, run. Take with a breath. one health remaining, he makes it into Bubble Gloop Swamp. That was beautiful. Well done. I'm so happy, dude. All right, <laughs> let's go. Bubble Gloop is uh, good for notes, but the tokens kind of suck in it. They're pretty long, but we really, really need tokens, so we're going to have to make do with whatever's in the way here. And also, Bubble Gloop, of course, as you see, uh, the the floor takes a lot of hits. The piranhas will bite you when you're in the water. So health management is going to be a somewhat of an issue here. Not really an issue, but it'll be hard to control. Hopefully it goes well. There will be a few scary points. Oh no. That wasn't intentional. That's actually... I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to get this health. There's a section later on where I could potentially die uh, from enemy RNG. So if I get an extra health, then I can avoid that, which is nice. Here we're just, oh god, we're just opening tanked up. We're not gonna get that jiggy, even though it's right there. We don't need it. We're just gonna enter here for this note, for these notes. All of these eggs and this token. The token is the most important part. And then we're just gonna leave. The egg management in this route is actually kind of neat, because every single egg I get is gonna be used for at least a small strat to save a couple tenths of a second. Some of them are required. You only need three eggs in this entire run. Uh, up until Grunty, that is. Uh, you need to break the web to open, to free the flight pad uh, in front of FP. But all the other eggs can be used for like other smaller strats, just here and there throughout the run to save time. So there's a lot of timing involved in uh, figuring out which eggs are worth getting specifically to use for small strats. And that kind of timing is my favorite kind because all of them combined probably saves like less than a second, <laughs> but still, still optimal. All right. As me is a phenom of frame saving when it comes to routing this game. Yeah. Oh my god, that save. <laughs> that was very scary. <laughs> All right. You're just going to hop through the maze. This is actually one of the few routes you'll ever see the waiting boots in, in the optimal route. Uh, in the 100% route, for FFM in both no, no FFM and FFM, you don't get the waiting boots at all. In fact, in the no FFM route, you don't even learn the move. In normal any percent, with the route you would see in the current record, you wouldn't see the, this move used at all. So, take note. This is the one time you'll see it. Very likely, it is. So this BGS route is actually my favorite BGS route because of this little section coming up. It's neat to see. We're going to get this token back behind Mumbo's hut. I'm going to backflip up here and go on top of the maze. 
and jump all the way here. Jump all the way here. Little neat platforming section. Big jump here as well. And with these last few notes, we'll be done with this level. Not bad of a BGS. All right, I gotta skip that text. For as many times as I've seen you do this, I always get nervous with that last note there. Yeah, I do too, kind of. Only if you do if you do a big jump at the very last note, then you'll for sure die. But if not, then you won't die. In this game, if you hold A for like a different amount of time, uh, you'll do a, like a, a different height of a jump. But if you hold A for the maximum amount, which is 18 frames, then Banjo will float very slowly to the ground, which in that case would have made my invincibility frames run out, which would have meant that I would have died. I would have died, which would have been quite bad. But in this category, if you die with one less note, one fewer notes in a level, there's a few backups in other places, thankfully. It's not 100%, so we can just get another note from somewhere else. And to clarify for chat, um, when you die, your highest note score is saved. Meaning if you had 78 notes when you die, you'd get credit for 78 notes. But your actual notes aren't saved. So if you wanted to get, say, 79 because that's what you needed, well, then you'd have to collect the other 78 again. So dying can be incredibly painful here if you don't want to die. But coming up is yet another difficult trick to enter a level. If you've noticed, that's kind of the theme of this run. This one's not going to have as fancy of a technical explanation. This is going to be raw speed versus weak geometry. Ah, oh, damn it, dude. <laughs> you know, I jinxed that yesterday. Yesterday I was like, dude, out of all the runs that I've done, uh, in prep for this race, this this run. I haven't failed that once. <laughs> Jinxed it. In this case, raw geometry one. Where BGS early was the the hardest trick in the run for sure. This is my worst trick personally. But it's not too bad. There we go. With some neat beak bombs and angle changes. Make it in there. Changing your angle in flight is quite difficult. You have to like be very precise on the joystick angle to make sure that Banjo faces as high as possible. Because in this game, when you're flying, your beak bomb aims for the center of the screen. So if you're like gaining a bit of height, either after a beak bomb or by using a uh, feather, uh, if you have very specific angles on your joystick, you can manipulate it so the camera faces up really, like, really drastically. But it's not easy to do. And that's worth noting because there's going to be a really high beak bomb coming up right here. There we go. FP is a, an easy level because all 100 notes are, like, basically perfectly accept, uh, accessible. Like, right from the start. You don't need any moves. They're just, like, a few inside some loading zones. But most of them are just, like, outside, out in the open. So there's a lot of easy notes to grab in this level. Ooh, take off. And a beak bomb all the way up to the hat. Oh god, I did not expect that. <laughs> Scared me. Alright, in normal 100% runs, actually, you would uh, climb up this slope, uh, up this scarf. Uh, in any percent, though, you're, uh, we're going to climb down it. And I mentioned this because what's interesting is that when you're going up slopes, you actually lose speed compared to just flat ground. But when you're going down slopes, you actually gain speed. So it's interesting to note, in isolation, if you were to just jump up that entire slope, time it and then compare it to just 
walking down that entire slope. It would actually differ by like a full two seconds. Uh, and it's the exact same difference or distance. So it's very important to optimize where you walk down hills and then jump up hills. It's little tiny things. That stone almost sniped me. It's actually not bad because I have to refill here anyways. Oh, I gotta get two health because I failed FP early once. <laughs> Right there, I was walking downhill uh, instead of just jumping. In general, jumping is the fastest form of movement on flat ground. It accelerates you to your top speed the fastest. It doesn't actually make you go faster, but it makes you go to your top speed as soon as possible. Right, right there, we got all the notes in the water. It's actually kind of hard to do um, without taking an extra hit. If you do that wrong and take an extra hit and have one health, you can actually bear punch the snowballs or beak bust them, and then they give you a honeycomb. Right here, I'm gonna corner myself into that wall right there and then beak, bomb, beak barge straight down. So I land on the fire in a precise way where um, I land right in front of Mumbo. And that's important because I want him to talk to me so I can skip his text while I'm dying. And that just saves a tiny bit of time later on when we actually transform. All right. I'm gonna have to switch my controllers here. I switched my controllers for bit clips. So I guess now is my turn to come back in. Um, we are about to do another bit clip, just like we saw for uh, Bubble Gloop Swamp. This one is probably the most known of the few you'll see in this run. This is for Mad Monster Mansion early. But before we even do any bit clip shenanigans, we need to set up some things for the pumpkin, which will end up leaving Mad Monster Mansion and needs to go down a hill. So we have to break that gate. But we also want to be in a very specific position to start our setup. The best way to do that... That amazing series of maneuvers. Well, the did, exact same trick. <laughs> yep. What he actually did there is he uh, landed on an invisible ceiling and used that to fall out of bounds to warp back to the start and give us in a very specific location. From there, running with Talon Trot, pausing at the right point in order to know what to do next. Because depending on when he pauses, he'll actually do one of two different setups. So based on the setup he got, this is, I, I forgot if he labels it A or B, but one of the two setups. This is the earlier to, frame. So yep, the early frame. He needs to look around Whenever he's doing these little like twirly whirlies, he's looking for a very specific thing in either the background or the foreground to indicate that he's looking in the exact right direction. From there, he does what's called a punch cancel, where he presses B and then A the next frame. And that allows him to move ever so slightly forward. It's, it's the smallest amount of feasible movement you can have. Oh, oh God. Ooh. And That's rough. Yeah, right there what happened is he pressed B, and then I believe you pressed A two frames later, is that correct? Yeah, instead of one frame later. Yep. <laughs> That's funny, that was the very last input for the trick. And so because of that, we're back to the start. There's no recovery. As I mentioned, this is extremely precise. So if one input goes out of whack, it's back to the start again. Yeah, it's the later frame. <laughs> you know, you'll see me do different stuff because I paused on a different frame than before. So, you may be wondering how this works. Well, cue a uh, popular banjo meme. The floor in banjo is made of triangles. I to, keep to, you, <laughs> to keep you from falling through the floor, the game uses an algorithm to determine if a triangle is beneath you. This algorithm is mathematically perfect. However, we're not in the world of pure math. We're in the world of numbers stored as 32-bit floats. On occasion, you will find points on the seam between two triangles while, where, thanks to this imprecise arithmetic, the floor detection check fails on both sides of, of the seam. And when that happens, it's as if you have no floor. You can fall straight through. And in this case, be on with your MMM. 
Pushing controllers are just so hard. <laughs> right there, if you noticed, uh, I walked into the loading zone at the exact same time that I got into Talent Trot, which allowed me to skip that animation of getting into Talent Trot, which is a neat little, like, I think 0.7 second time save right there. And little time saves are very, very relevant in MMM. This level is known to be super, super movement based. Uh, which is actually very nice for me because that's, um, in terms of just any percent, it's the least stressful. Because, like, sure, I'll, I may make a mistake here and there, but nothing's going to cost me, like, 30 seconds or something. So, this level is a nice chill rest before the gauntlet of stupid tricks that are hard to do. <laughs> Even though we've already passed a few of them. Ooh, these skeletons. Okay, they're fine. There's a neat little uh, exploit here where you can just jump over this hedge. I'm going to use it to start climbing the mansion. Nice, I got the talent shot on the other I told myself I wouldn't do that. Because for that specific one, I don't know if you've noticed it, but when the Jiggy fade-out was happening, it was extremely laggy. So if you fail that talent run the loading zone like I did there, you're likely going to lose, like, probably another second or so. So it's not worth going for, but I'm dumb. So I go for it. Here's another neat lag reduction strat. I hold R there to change the camera right when I exit. So the camera faces away from the rest of the level. In this room, we have to be... Sneaky. We're not gonna get this jiggy, so we can't touch the floor when we're leaving. And in order to do that, we're just gonna hop on the table here and jump out. Ah, perfect. Touch the carpet, but not the wooden floor. You can actually make that from the chair, but uh, it requires you to peg a lot earlier. And if you peck like out of a talent shot, you have like no momentum, so it's actually slower to jump from the chair. Right, these teehees seem to be in decent spots. Nice. There's a neat little jump there. You can use that hive at the peak of its uh, jump. You can jump off of it and climb up the, the maze. Those roof notes are really hard to do. They're, that I think that roof section is like the hardest movement section to just do cleanly, <clears throat> personally. Just not miss a note. Like it's literally just two straight lines. And for some reason that's just like so difficult. To me at least, I find it. <laughs> now we're the pumpkin. Pumpkin is the only non-B transformation. <laughs> the only transformation that is useless in terms of its abilities, as in it can only jump. That's it. it can literally only jump. It's the only transformation that we use, that kind. And it's very crucial because we need this pumpkin to enter the watershed outside of this level in order to raise the water level to continue on in the lair section. So a watershed skip or like a way to skip raising the water would be very very helpful for this run because it would mean that we can skip the pumpkin that's been a holy grail of banjo speed running for a long time though yeah the new holy grail it used to be a 10 skip but that's still uh, that's task only but for now was fun. Uh, all of these float, all of these kind of flow clips, bit clips, I may use those words interchangeably, that it's the same trick. All of these have been claimed TAS only at one point, but we've moved past that. And so there's hope that someday in the future, a 10 skip will be solved. Pumpkin skip, on the other hand, no dice, even for a TAS. Oh. I say that because, uh, if a 10 skip was found, then you would only need to get 260 notes for this entire run. 
You only need to get 260 notes, uh, one Jiggy, just like this run, and a buttload of tokens. So much so that level routes actually would become like routed specifically because of tokens. Uh, and it would also mean that you don't have to enter every level. So, A10 skip would be super cool to see RTA, but personally, I kind of don't want to see it, just because I like any percent the way it is, where you go to every single level, you do all these super cool tricks. Uh, and I, I just think it's, like, the most entertaining category. I mean, that's all accurate. I say hope because it's my goal to destroy these games. But <laughs> as far as entertainment value goes, you're right. It's great that it's not yeah. found yet. All right. Yeah, transform. All right. Now we got to transform back into the pumpkin and walk all the way back out. You might see in 100% runs, people reset out of here. And that's only faster because you need to get the Clanker's Witch Switch Jiggy. Uh, walking out is not actually that slow. Uh, but we obviously don't need Jiggy, so we're just gonna hop out as a pumpkin. And, yeah. Coming up is gonna be a few hard tricks. Well, one hard trick and one easy trick. Uh, and they're gonna allow us to go into Click Clockwood as early as we can. I guess I'll kill the raw guy this run. God, I hate yeah. that guy. Yes, you should. Uh, for context, there's an enemy which gets in the way of a bit clip setup. And what that means is, based on purely RNG, he may just run into you. And you have very little way to defend yourself, because remember, you cannot do anything that's not prescribed. So by killing that enemy first, he will stop it from getting in the way, potentially, just due to random chance, and forcing him to start over again. Yeah. In 100% runs, it's like a 5 second detour to kill him. And in this run, I think it's like a 9-ish second, 8 to 9 seconds. But it's probably, it's definitely still worth it. I wouldn't go for it on a PB pace run, but this guy's been a jerk to me for the past, like, few days, so I'm just gonna kill him. <laughs> 464 notes, that's right. First, right before we go there, gotta raise the water level even further. Hey, look, it's RBB. We won't go there just yet. Not, not just yet. Save that for later. Right there, I got a neat little quick dive. Uh, got into Talent Trot and slid off right before the cutscene started. Now I'm all the way at the bottom. Because the next place that I need to go is back into that loading zone. It's a neat little quick dive. Uh, I'm actually really bad at it, so I'm glad I got it. <laughs> Now we're going to go all the way back up here, hit yet another uh, water button, and then we'll start the trick. Those last two eggs were perfectly used to break that grate, which does save a tiny bit of time. Now we don't need any more eggs. Oh, whoops. There we go. So right there, uh... I basically get stuck on that little ledge there, and as I'm stuck, I'm building downward speed, and once I have enough speed, I go all the way to the left side of there, and I can just like clip right through, and use the water that's out of bounds to navigate into the 640 note door without opening it. So that was the raw guy that I had to kill, because he's a jerk. Now I have to get leaf jump, this jump, with an awkward camera. There we go. All right, it's fine. All right. And now the incredibly useless spawning the puzzle for Click Clock Woods. Obviously, we're not gonna use this puzzle. What we are gonna use is the reloading of the area to make sure Banjo is in a perfectly consistent position because guess what time it is? It's bit clip time. And so right there is where he could have been potentially hit by the enemy had he not killed it earlier. But he's just going to hold right here. And just keep holding right as the camera flips do their thing. Pause. And based on that pause, he'll figure out which is the best frame. Sorry, which um, setup is the correct one to do based on the frame he paused. So this stuff 
is this can get very difficult to memorize. You can imagine just for Click Clock Woods early alone, there's three different setups, each with at least three or four different twirlies and then different amounts of punch cancels. It's really complicated. And the fact that you can have all this stuff memorized, ready to go, be able to switch between them depending on what you pause is really difficult. And part of the reason why I'm here, because I can at least talk about this stuff. I, I do want to give a shout out to 8-Bit Beast for doing all the kind of mechanics work to figure out about these clips in the first place. Without him, we would not be doing that. And that's always really cool. That was a really good big clip. Yeah, that was actually really solid. That's the last big clip in this run. Thankfully. <laughs> it's over. That's actually uh, three out of four of all the bit clips that are RTA viable currently. That has like purpose, I guess. There's one more bit clip you can do in fall in front of Mumbo's hut that they use in the 100% route. Uh, but we don't go to Mumbo's hut in fall, uh, so it's just not in this route. That one's the easiest though out of all of them. So in Click Clock Wood here, we're essentially just going to climb the tree in all of the seasons. Getting some notes along the way, tokens, other stuff, hitting the switches. This level is pretty straightforward, it's just a lot of hard movement you have to do. Be good at and make sure you don't fall, because every fall is like, gonna be like 40 seconds or so. This level is fittingly difficult considering it's the last level in the game. However, as you may Maybe remember, we're going to uh, every single level in this run. So this is not the last level of the run. And you'll see why pretty soon we've left certain levels to later. Right there, little neat glitch. Uh, if you beak bust and then recoil off an edge, you, you're immune to fall damage, unless you get hit on the way down in that case, uh, your falling animation will start all over again, which can be very dangerous in certain areas of the game. So, which is why it's not used as often in other categories. All right, Summer. Summer is, doesn't have too many notes, but it has a lot of tokens, which is super helpful because we only have to do two transformations in this entire run. Yet, so much of this routing depends on tokens. Okay. Why jumps around these birds? I'm taking that safe. T I'm not falling. What, what you describe as taking it safe is still the most death defying looking thing. Yeah. I feel like I can't remember not jumping around those birds. T which is why it's safe to me. Here, we're gonna yeet ourselves all the way to this leaf. Back to this shock pad. Now we're just gonna go right back to this bridge. Just a little, small little detour for that token. I believe that's an eight second token. For reference, in like 100% runs, the average token is like two seconds. So the fact that we're getting eight second tokens and even slower tokens, potentially, if we miss one or something, that shows you how tight tokens are in this route. And what wasn't mentioned there was he just jumped straight through one of the snare bears. Oh, yeah. And so those oh. have a very interesting collision. Behind their eyes, it's actually space to land. And so don't trust every uh, hurt box that seems to be there. Watch, this bird is going to come back. And the health is still there. If you kill that bird uh, after hitting the switch, but before the cutscene starts, Essentially, if it doesn't fully die before the cutscene starts, then it'll just respawn. Which allows you to get an extra HP. I'm behind the snare bear's eyes once more in this level. And that's summer. All right, Ball. Ball has the most notes. Yeah, this level has 48 notes. In the entirety of Click Clock Wood, 
There's four notes in the lobby, 16 in summer, 16 in spring, 16 in winter. But fall has 48. This is the gold mine for notes. This is definitely worth going in most any percent routes. Almost every any percent route, I guess. Probably every single any percent route. Yeah, probably. It's also neat because now, right here, right after we're going to get these notes, we're going to scale up the tree, but not not up the easy side. We're going to go up the leaves. It can be kind of kind of tricky. They're so small. And right here, that was kind of sketchy, but we were able to skip that leaf and avoid that bird clean. Ah, oh, go away! <laughs> okay. Don't touch me! Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I'm clean so platforming. Get through with ease. Sketchy, sketchy. Here's some more. Oh no! Alright, it's fine. There's some more slope abuses. Okay, that was close. I didn't think I was gonna work it. <laughs> oh god, these saves. I'm gonna quick dive all the way down back to these notes and continue grabbing them along the rest of the tree. And right here, with our last gold feather, we have... We're gonna grab these three notes and head on out. But we're actually on the very opposite side of the level exit. So what we're gonna do is, um... We're gonna do a similar trick to what we did at 640, at the 640 note door. We're gonna build up our speed on this little ramp right here. Uh... And clip out just in a tiny hole. Easy. That one's actually a lot easier than it looks. Now, fall is done. We've got most of the notes that we want. Just gonna head to spring ag as again. Now we're gonna transform into the bee. Just after getting oh the rest of the tokens that we need. All right, three health. That's fine. Don't usually take a hit there, but you can back this up. Fine. I don't need that. Right there, I slid right under that bird. You can do that with a handful of birds in this game, but some of them are a bit harder to do than others. Right there, what happened was I started entering the falling animation right when I took a hit by that snare bear. And because of that, oh, don't, don't touch me. Go away. All right. No, I still need the health. Don't touch me. God, okay. Fine. Uh, because of that, I was able to flutter right out of the snare bear. It's only taking two hits, because the snare bear takes two hits when it hits you. Here's a neat little trick, I'm gonna quick dive down, but because I didn't fully leave Talon Trot before I hit the brambles, it put me right back in Talon Trot, so I can keep my Talon Trot as I go through that, uh, the thorny section. Perfect 25 tokens, transforming into the B. How long I trained my inputs. Long time, long, long time. I think I've ran this game for a bit over three years now. But I swap between categories a lot, which refines skill without focusing too much on muscle memory. Asme, can oh, I right ask? there's a little trick RBA. Uh, you just basically just fly through the top of the door. That grunty text right there, if you saw it, it actually makes clipping through way easier. I think it's... I don't actually know why. I think it's because of lag, but you're just able to clip instantly with that grunty text there. Now that we're the B, we're out of the Click Clockwood lobby. Wait. Uh, we're going to get the last of our notes. We only have like 500 and something notes, I think. We're going to go to three levels of the B. This is the first one. RBB. RBB. Haha, <laughs> funny. I was told to make B jokes, but I kind of don't want to. <laughs> Asmi, can Bring I ask what brought you into uh, running yeah. this game? Yeah, can you say that again? I said, uh, can I ask what got you into running Banjo in the first place? Uh, 
I used to run, uh, I watched a good amount of GDQ runs, uh, but that's not what I, when I started running it. I started running it, uh, I think in, uh, well, I started watching it in like August 2017. I was just like up late at night and I was sc scrolling through Twitch and saw this streamer named Haganator streaming Banjo-Kazooie. So I just watched him and then he streamed like consistently. So I watched him day after day. Um, and then eventually I just like started to like the game a lot. I noticed that um, most viewers or of like big streamers like to watch the streamers for their personality. Uh, and well, I like, I do like Haganator, but I noticed that, that um, I like to focus a lot more on the game. And I noticed that because I would often ask a lot of questions uh, then other chatters won't ask. And then <laughs> eventually I got to the point where like, I was answering a lot of questions from like actual runners. Like I was telling them how to do certain things, a lot of new runners mostly, but I didn't even run the game at that time. <laughs> then eventually I got to the point where a lot of people were like, why don't you just run the game? Why, why don't you just stream it? But then I just started streaming and then that's when I started pretty you much. You like, you know what? <laughs> yeah, maybe Aww. I should do this. Right, there's a neat little window clip. You, it's actually a lot more difficult than it seems. I got really lucky there. Uh, it just you just have to like face pretty perpendicular into the wall there at a very specific height, and you should be able to clip right through. Pretty sure it requires a lag frame as well. So that is true. It does require a lag. Two of those you're able to do two window clips. There are three windows in this level that you're able to go into. But you're only able to do two on NTSCU, uh, which is the version that I'm playing on. On PAL, you can clip through all of them. On emulator, you can't clip through any of them, which is unfortunate. <laughs> okay. Right here's a little B section. That's nice. That section's quite difficult. That's probably like the most difficult section of RBB. But that one pretty smooth. Getting all those three notes without without landing at all. So we haven't talked much about bee movement, which as you can see is very different than bear movement. One, you can fly, but also the way you travel around, you need to think about things a bit differently. When you press A to gain height, you move up a fixed distance unless you hit a low ceiling that can uh, constrain your flight. And so because of that, you really want to be careful because if you want to just like collect notes in a line like right here and you try to take flight, yeah, you can move a bit faster, but then you'll be too high and it'll take a while for you to descend back down to the next note. So the A presses here are actually very carefully planned out so that you hit everything exactly at the right height, like you see there. Uh, this RBB is actually like... This, this RBB has been like perfect, pretty much. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. Okay, well, I shouldn't have said that right there. <laughs> oh... I was like, there's nothing hard left in this level. I can say it. <laughs> okay, that was the last thing I could mess up in this level, I swear. So, are you actually expecting me to make bee puns? Because I could say this level is the, this um, attempt was the bee's knees, but I really don't want to make bee puns. <laughs> I'm sick and tired. Someone told me in my chat a couple days ago specifically to say that joke. <laughs> I feel like it was that you. Was me. I can't that remember. was me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And that's our BB. So next, I'm just gonna go a bit more flying through the lair. Right there, we're entering that loading zone in the water, which means that the bee is automatically taking flight. So it's a bit tricky to go into that loading zone. Have to hold a specific angle. Next uh, level we're gonna enter is Gobi's Valley. This so level is infamous for being rerouted several times over the past few years. We're just gonna uh uh B hop right in. There we go. There's just a hole at the top there, if you're wondering how that mm -hmm. works. That was no fancy clip. That was just oh, there's no way they'll ever get this high. Let's not put a ceiling here. Right here, grinding along the wall in order to stay in flight. Then we have just the perfect amount of height to get all those notes in the land right before we enter Jinxie. It's a neat little strat that saves like six seconds or so. It's really clean. 
the Gobi's Valley, it's infamous for being routed several times. So first, from when I started running, there was a route that's similar to this route, uh, where you enter Jinxie first. Oh no, don't kill me. Oh no, I don't like this. Go away. Don't touch me. All right. <laughs> I juked him right at the end. I actually, that actually happened yesterday as well. And I learned from my mistake. <laughs> juked him right at the end. Anyways, there was this other route where um, you'd enter Jinxie at the beginning and then Death Warp in Ruby's Pyramid, which is what we're going to do here. Um, but then it was rerouted by Hyper Resonance to go to Ruby's first and then Death Warp inside of Jinxie. Uh, and then it was rerouted again by myself and 8-Bit Beast to uh, start in Jinxie and then go inside Ruby's last. Just switching order, switching the note order a tiny bit in between, and doing a little extra B flying. Like right here, you'd expect me to just walk all around this moat, right? Nope, we're just gonna hop down, get all these in flight, hopefully. Yeah. Oh no. You know what? Calculated. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally intentional. The B falls a lot faster if you land first, so that's why you'll see things where. You'll land and then fall off an edge as opposed to flying straight down. Ideally in the B sections, you want to just grab as many things as you can in flight. And when you're grabbing things in flight, make sure you don't land like right here, which is kind of difficult to do in a lot of places. Ah, oh, right there. It's also difficult because no hitboxes are terrible and they're easy to miss. It's quite precise. You, right there, we're doing some fancy sh movement in order to get those pyramid notes. Those are actually like so hard. I'm pretty sure I grinded that for at least like three hours one day in order to get that to a good consistency. It's quite, quite difficult. And we're just about done with Gobi's. This is like the only place where we have to walk everywhere for that, those moat notes, those 11 notes. I'm just going to remind you, because this came up the other day, but don't take extra fire damage. Okay, I can... can <laughs> the other day, I was confusing my routes, and then I just died. Uh, oh, no. That sucks. I just died preemptively without getting the rest of the notes. Right here, if you're just facing into the top of that corner with a specific angle, you can fly right through. It's a good thing I failed that, because then I was able to explain it. It's totally why I did that. All right, don't die until I get all the notes. It's beautiful. <laughs> 85 notes, perfect. All right, and that's Gobi's Valley as the bee. It's a neat little level. I think in terms of difficulty and entertainment, it goes, or for the B levels at least, it goes RBB, then Gobi's Valley, and then this level coming up, Clanker's Cavern. We, if you would notice, we didn't open this level earlier and we didn't enter this level earlier by any level early tricks because there's no RTA viable way of entering Clanker's Cavern early as BK. But there is as the B, and it's quite simple because all you got to do is just hop over this wall and the entrance is right here. This level is the most difficult, but also the coolest B level for sure. Start off getting all these notes without getting hit, hopefully. Clean. All right, that was like one of the things that I just wanted to nail this run. I practiced that for like a solid half an hour. <laughs> Ooh. Right here, we're going to try and get all the notes except the first one. Um, in flight. You can technically get the first one as well, but it's very difficult to get that and be at the proper height, so I just get that later. Here I'm going to take a bit of intentional hit, intentional damage, as we're going across this half pipe. Setting up some camera movements for this clip right here. Out of bounds. Right here we're just going to go under the water surface. If you go under the water surface, then you're not actually like in the water. The water surface is where you're 
is what's needed in order to like swim, in order to like dive or something. In order to get like the bee's reaction to the water where you just start flying and never stop. So if you just go under the water, then you can do whatever you want as if you were on land. Here we're freeing Clankers. Quite a long cutscene, but we gotta go inside of him to get a few notes. Now just this little walking section, this little waddling section, the very bottom. It's probably like the longest walking section as the bee, I would say. Probably. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And it's over. All right, uh, lower, 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 lower. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> So, Clanker's Cavern is cycle-based. Uh, there's a bolt on top of Clanker's that uh, rises and goes down. And it goes down and goes up like every 10 seconds. So, you do have to play like this entire level optimally in order to make the optimal cycle. Oh, wow, that really sucks. No, doesn't it? <laughs> but, and it's very, very difficult. Uh, I've actually only ever made the optimal cycle once in... Um, in a run. I remember because um, the optimal cycle for this category, for this level routing, uh, once I grinded for like six hours just to make it one time, that was like the happiest moment of my life. <laughs> Before, we thought that you couldn't make that cycle, and now it's just even harder on the runners because, well, runner, because no one else does this route. <laughs> um, you have to be even faster than before. Right there, we get that little extra life, which is handy, because we're going to need it. Now we're going to get this last note, and then now we're going to enter the bolt. There's like two fan blades right here where you can't possibly dodge. Well, you can if you are very careful with it. Oh, that's not good. I'm going to be careful here. All right, we're fine. Don't get the jiggy. Oh, Dude. damn it, I got it. No, my one jiggy run. It's over. So sad. I got two jiggies this run. I'm sorry, guys. I, I think you may have uh, just done it out of memory or out of habit, but you actually grabbed another jiggy in MM. Oh, did I? Where? Yes. Which uh, one? By the talent, by the talent shot. Wait, where? The, the one by the Stonehenge. Wait, really? Grab that jiggy. <laughs> what? Did I actually? That's crazy. I didn't even notice that. Oh, oh well. Whatever. Anyways. Those were a few of our last notes. This room is where we would typically learn gold feathers, but we learned that with FFM. Now we're just going to get the rest of these notes with some epic bee dodging abilities. And then we're going to die. Alright. Yeah, the bee can just waddle on through those chainsaws, those, not chainsaws, those fan blades, which is neat. And that's it. That's all the notes you need. Time to beat the game. Yep. Got 810 notes. That said, there are two very major obstacles before we get to the final boss. Yep, it's not over yet. Still a couple hard tricks left. And even then, the final fight, Grunty Fight, is probably one of the hardest things in the game to do optimally. <laughs> but uh, for all the optimal, for all the nice saves, for all the cool things that are hit this run, you ever want to just lose minutes to RNG? Because that could happen coming up. Oh, I love that. Sounds great. Right here, we're detransforming. This trigger right here, we went around this trigger. Uh, in order to go through the loading zone earlier, which is what allowed us to keep our B and abuse it in all the other levels. Eight, ten notes, perfect, perfect. Now we're entering Furnace Fun. Fun level, fun, fun, very fun. So much fun, so much fun. Everyone has fun in this place, right? So much fun. So in this place here, we're going to just 
What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to answer all these questions as you make your way towards Grunty. Then as you answer the last question, you're gonna watch a fake credits cutscene. And then you're gonna go back to the top of the tower and then fight Grunty for real and then watch the real credits. But instead here, we're gonna answer like five questions. Yeah, we're gonna answer five questions, six kind of, uh, one. That's the only Jiggy we use in the game, that one Jiggy. Then we're gonna try our best to skip this, skip this section. Do you wanna explain the trick, Ring Rush? Yeah, so once again, I'm called upon to talk about small, small regions of, that you need to get into. In this case, we have a one unit large region. It's about 10,000 times larger than a bit clip, but we have to hit it without a setup. So what he's gonna do is very carefully inch himself over and he wants to land in the space between these two tiles and get into Talon Trot. From there, while he's getting into Talon Trot, he wants to activate the death square and then get the question wrong. But instead of killing him, like what would normally happen on a death square, it actually, because he's in Talon Trot, he canceled that animation. And so the walls that disappear in order to throw you off the side of the, off the, side of the board are still gone, but he's still there. And so we can just skip the rest. I'm muting on my end, so you can feel free to explain dog. Okay. Um, dog or door of grunty skip is another very um, tricky trick where he needs to run up against this wall to build up enough speed to fall through the um, bind with lag, fall through the floor. Oh my God. What a great Damn, dog. dude. What a great dog. And then once he, as soon as he clips, he needs to jump, <laughs> get around that door. And this is crazy. Literally every marathon run I've done, I've gotten that first try. I have yeah. no idea why or how. It that was an so hard to do consistently. In my any percent PB, I lose like 40 seconds to it. <laughs> but I got a first try right there. But we're not done yet because the Grindilla fight is not that easy. And especially with five health, you do need to be at least somewhat careful. Um, Luckily, we, he was able to fill up on eggs before the fight by pecking through that note door that would normally give you the egg refill. So he was able to skip collecting an extra, what was it, 16 notes? Uh, so he, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So eggs aren't really what he has to worry about here. Yeah. Things like that are, though. Little small being slightly off pace on something or slightly in the wrong angle can magnify time loss. And so... There, he takes that hit to go straight into this beak bomb phase as fast as possible. That was close. These can, these can be hard. Solid. And he hit them all. Okay. That's, that's a deep breath. If you see runners uh, do this fight, that is one of the parts they'll most often mess up is they'll try to beak bomb and they'll whiff because doing a fast beak bomb is difficult. Perfect camera already. And now we cross our fingers and hope for no soft lock. Nice. By uh, dropping eggs there into that cutscene, he was able to activate the orange Jinjo statue while the other statues are still rising, which is great. It allows us to save some time. It also risks soft locking the game, and we don't know exactly when it happens. Usually it doesn't happen, but this is when you really need to hope Okay, Those eggs <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was so scared for a second there. Uh, well, what would happen is, is you'll shoot the eggs into these statues and it, they won't activate. And so that was nerve wracking right there. Luckily, that was just a miss, and not a soft lock. 20 more eggs to go into the Ginginator statue, and this run is over, so be ready on time. Up soon. I'm like... 20 seconds. As soon as this last cutscene plays. And time. GG's. GG. Nice run. What was that final time? That was clutch, some of those moments. Uh, we have you at 103.54. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Nice, yeah. Thank you so much for uh, running this, Azmi.
uh, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, show off the game. Uh, do, do you or Ring Rush have any uh, final words, thoughts uh, uh, for everyone? Shout outs? <laughs> If you like this run, if you like seeing a lot of the glitches in this run, I would definitely recommend uh, going on YouTube, finding Ring Rush's YouTube channel, and watching his task <laughs> of any percent minimal moves. He actually premiered it a couple days ago, and you can watch a commentated version on a YouTube channel slash Twitch channel called Banjo Race. It has a lot of the same route as this, and it's super cool to watch because it's a lot of task movement. If you thought the B movement that I did here was good, the task movement is insane. Tons more bit clips, ton tons more tricks. It's really cool. I definitely recommend checking that out. All right, if we're doing this, then if you like this run but want to see it just a bit better, in fact, if you want to see it in world record time, then you should go follow twitch.tv slash asme. Asme won? Asme won, yes. Asme won, because yeah. he yeah. is the record holder for this category, and he does stream this game quite a lot. Yeah. Well, awesome, y'all. Uh, again, thanks for being here. Um, and as they said, y'all, if you enjoyed uh, the run, make sure you follow Asmi on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash Asmi1. Uh, and if you enjoyed the commentary, follow Ring Rush as well. That's twitch.tv slash Ring Rush. Um, but that is going to do it for tonight. Uh, we had a good time. I had a great time. Thank you for being here. Um, I've been your host, Smooth Operative, and we will see you next time. See ya. Yeah.